Okay, it's dark, he's on at time, it's very good, and he has to go and be somewhere at two. So I'm going to call this meeting to order. We have a quorum, a quorum. I have laryngitis, so if I squeak like I did in caucus meeting, please forgive me. Okay, Senator Burke, we have a substitute to Senate Bill 357. Will you look at the number? Is it LC three seven two six four five S? That's correct, that Madam correct? Chair. Okay. Have my members got it? Did you find it in your folder? Ready to go? Okay, Senator Burke, you've got the floor. Thank you, Madam Chairwoman, and the members of the committee. I appreciate you having me here today, and of course, appreciate you accommodating my schedule. This is a challenging time for all of us. Uh, and of course, I'm sure the chairwoman here can uh, convince some of her physician members of this chamber to help her out with her illness, uh, Dr. Newton. Um, I bring before you Senate Bill 357, and, and the whole purpose of this bill is to change the uh, direction of uh, health care outcomes in Georgia. Uh, as most of you know, our uh, health care outcomes in Georgia are, are, are somewhat embarrassing for a state that has as many resources as we do. Uh, being the number one state in which to do business for the last five years, having great research institutions, uh, having great health care systems, uh, we can do better. And, and the purpose of this bill is uh, to uh, try to provide an infrastructure to allow that to happen. Um, this develops a um, health care policy director position that would report directly to the governor and would uh, develop a health coordination and innovation council that would uh, basically uh, vet policy recommendations, uh, work through the, the, the pros and cons, make sure that, that whatever uh, recommendations were made had science behind them and measurable goals and outcomes that, that, that they could be uh, compared against. Uh, we have also uh, in the bill earlier, uh, to, to let you know the change in the substitute, we had an innovation center. Um, the House Rural Development Council's health care bill also had an innovation center, and I've been working with the, that bill's uh, offer, uh, author, uh, uh, Representative Jaspers and uh, Chairman England, to make sure that the, the, the uh, language in the, in the health care innovation center, which is way I explain it is that's the research arm of this. These, this would be the folks that would provide the science for the, for the policy makers to make sure that they had what they needed to make good, good decisions. And so we're, we, I took that language out and, and we're going to flesh out that part of uh, uh, the, the House bill. And, and so the center language is, is being been removed. The only other change in the substitute is, is uh, we did put a sunset of, of four years here basically to give the new governor uh, a, a time to do an evaluation of, of whether the, the process is working. And, and if it's working, then he can get his floor leaders, and I'm sure whoever that is can, can, can uh, renew this, this council if it's being effective. And, and if not, then we can uh, let it go where a lot of the councils in our uh, body go. Well, Be glad to answer questions madam chair okay senator this i mean this seems to be all encompassing of everything is this committee going to act as a, the gork committee where anybody wanting to or any legislate le legislator wanting to uh write a bill that affects health policy is going to have to come before it or get there okay I, okay I like to look at it more as what the uh criminal justice reform did for, for Georgia. You know, it, it basically laid the guidelines. These, these are the directions we want to go for improved outcomes. And, and it can be a resource to our legislators, not a barrier. And then so it would be open for the legislators to influence the guidelines as they saw fit? Absolutely. Okay. Representative Jasper. As long as we control funding, we've got a lot of influence. Is that a threat? No, ma'am. And I, and we are you planning on going for the job running this, ma'am? You said we. 
Are you, you're saying, saying the, as the long as the legislature got it. Has Sorry, purse string I'm, controls. I'm slow. Okay, today, Representative, Representative Jaspers. I wanted to echo um, Senator Burke's comments that he and I have been working very closely on this and. Uh, now there, there's trouble right there. <laughs> if you've been Madam working Chairman, on it. I'm, I'm learning, right. you know, and, <laughs> okay. and trying to do better sometimes. Okay, but good. yeah, we worked real hard on this to make sure that you know the House's Rural Development Council's uh, language, uh, this work together. Uh, we'll have our bill and their health committee later this week, and uh, so we, <laughs> I just want to put my check mark that uh, Senator Burke and uh, we've all been working very well together. Thank you. Representative Hatchett. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm sorry I haven't asked you this already. I apologize, Senator. Line 51 in the section, I guess it's section three, where you outline who all the members should be of on the council. Line 51 says four representatives from the private health care sector. And in my brief perusal of this I haven't seen anywhere where it specifically outlined a practicing physician would that be something that you might that we would think about maybe saying in line 51 or do you think that's necessary or has it been thought about talked about already beat up well I, I've you know I'm obviously biased towards uh, having uh, physician representation I've tried to, to not be prescriptive to, you know, give the, the governor the kind of the leeway of, of, you know, when they make that sacrifice to run statewide office and, and take on what they take on, I, I think it's much as possible we need to give them some, some leeway. But if you're asking would I be amenable to, a, you know, a, a, an amendment in this body, obviously I would be. Just, just that one line maybe saying at least one of those four representatives should be a practicing physician. I don't maybe hear what the rest of the committee thinks of that. Okay. I don't know. I'm certainly willing to go with the will of the committee. Yeah, you want to at the proper time? Do you want to so make So I would at the proper time, okay. however Betsy says we should word it. I'll, okay. I'd like to do that. Okay. Representative Silcox. Thank you, Madam Chair. Along the lines of um, Representative Hatchett's concern, um, my concern would be really over the, um, the position of the Director of Healthcare Policy and Strategic Planning on line 40. I know you kind of outline what that person, their qualifications would be, would do in lines 85 through the next page. Um, and I really appreciate your comments that um, this would be centered around science um, and real solid medical evidence as opposed to um, some anecdotal type of testimony we sometimes have. Um, but my concern would be that this might be a turf battle, and um, I guess I would prefer to see someone from um, a governmental position or some, some other type of neutral position as opposed to somebody necessarily from, directly from the medical field or directly from the insurance industry. I think one of the things that we're trying our best to avoid is a, is a turf battle, and that's that's why we tried to um, make this uh, uh, position uh, be representative of somebody that had healthcare knowledge experience in some clinical capacity. Uh, the, uh, we, we did not want somebody like the, as, as great as the commissioners that we have right now are, and they, they truly are working hard on, on, on trying to cooperate um, I, I think if we let one of them be the, quote, the guy, then that kind of takes it away and they, they've got more influence. So the, the, the uh, reason that we, we chose what we did was to try to avoid that. I, you know, I'm not sure we can completely eliminate that because it obviously depends on who the governor picks. I mean, mm -hmm. that's just as only as good as, as that person. But we tried to put some guidelines in there to try to m eliminate as much of that tugging as, as possible, but um, the um, appreciate your concern. Thank I'm you. Are you anybody. sure you're not going to be applying for this job? 
Somebody I'm with extensive experience I'm in quite healthcare happy living policy, in, living in the country, ma'am, <laughs> and having healthcare as a healthcare clinician <laughs> and administrator, which you are now. Do you I'm, write I'm not, this for I'm yourself? I'm not sure they can afford me. I'll be honest. Oh. <laughs> That's, you're not paid. That, that's, about the, uh, that's about the only thing that the bill doesn't include is the setting of a salary to go with this. But, you know, I guess it's up to the governor to do that, too. So we'll give us a little leeway. Uh, you don't think you're going to come over here without getting some ribbon, do you? No, ma'am. Okay. Senator, uh, Representative Fry. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Senator Burke, this is a friendly question. So we... Do we not have a health policy uh, group going on in the state of Georgia to advise us as of now? Is this like brand new, a great idea? Let's get a group together and figure out what we're doing with our health policy? Um, I would say that would be the case. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for bringing this up. That's something we need to be ca caught up on. I mean, a lot of the, the agencies have specific health care areas that they work on but there's not really any coordination uh, process. Okay, good. So they're, they're all working in silos. Thanks a lot. Okay, well, Representative Pruitt. Thank you, Madam Chair. Quick question. I, I don't see a direct reference to dental in here. Would that be included in, under the medical? It, uh, it would, and, and you know, again, we're trying to find the, the balance because I, I can promise you as soon as we passed this bill out of the, the Senate, I was hit by about 20 people who felt like their uh, group should be named specifically yeah. on here and so obviously uh, you get to a point where you, if it gets too big you can't really have a functional group so uh, uh, again um, uh, as uh, uh, leader uh, hatchet mentioned earlier the you know I think we can tweak it and I'm, I'm open to that but I th do think we need to be careful to, to uh, not pick the winners and losers as much mm -hmm. as possible and leave that to the governor if possible well, I just I wanted to make sure that it was at least a possibility because we do have such an issue with uh, dental services. Absolutely. I, I uh, agree completely. Well, I, I can't believe I'm going to say this, so you better mark it down, my vice chair, that, you know, your dental health definitely has a lot to do with your physical health. Absolutely. And if you've got a mouthful of rotting teeth or problems like that, you often have... In the world we live in, dental health, mental health, and obviously physical, uh, general uh, health. Or, I mean, we got to do it as a as a whole. Uh, so while we're doing this, I don't know whether my vice chair wanted to come up with an amendment to or not. Just representing you, Barr. Oh, where are you? Thank you. Uh, Twenty three. Thank you, sir, and I apologize for uh, my tardiness here. But just going over some of these, um, the dates here. And I think it starts on line 73. Um, just out of a curiosity, uh, it mentions a, a date that the annual report needs to be uh, December 1, 2018. Um, and I'm just wondering out loud if that is perhaps too soon to get a detailed report with the, what they need to put in that. Just, just out of curiosity, what are your thoughts on that? Well, I think the obviously at that point in time, the, the committee's or council's work would not be a finished. I mean, I think you know, for, for this to be done well, I, I suspect it would take 12 to 18 months to put together some sort of strategic plan at a minimum, yeah, right? Sure. But so the, the point about that was just to establish that that was going to happen and, and that the council would just report what they've done so far so that, uh, again, we're looking for transparency, that, that this, you know, whatever uh, direction the council's going, that, that, that we all know what that is. I mean, but okay. if this is done in December of 2018. I mean, will we even have we the appointments? I guess there's, there's a lot to do. That's what you say. That would mean that Governor Gill would be making the appointments to the council. Yeah, the council be is. Because be, he's still governor. I think by July of 18 is the, the, the council itself would, would be established. And some of the work that. Uh, uh, Representative Jasper's uh, bill uh, puts into place to, to develop that innovation center and RFP and so forth. Those those things would have to be accomplished. So uh, I think the, the the reason that is is in my mind that this is uh, you know the the healthcare situation that we find ourselves in is time critical. We need to start moving. Uh, 
And for, further, Madam Chair? Yes, go ahead. In, in, 2000, in, in 215, it says the council no later than October 1st, 2018, and annually thereafter submit the Health Coordination and Innovation Council to a report, its findings and recommendations. Again, I'm not, I don't have any major concern other than this, this needs to be a detailed report and then I, I would be concerned if I was on the council that we would have findings and recommendations very nearly after we were created in July to have something the first day of October that's all that's all I have thank you thank you madam chair and, and uh, to my friend uh, who, who's brought this before us today just a couple questions because I, I certainly agree with the idea of us and, and the focus that, that as a state for us putting a concentrated focus on, on improving you know the healthcare state of Georgia but I, I do want to you know anytime we're doing something like this I, I try to be cognizant of what the cost may be and in here, I see the council members will serve without compensation, uh, but they'll get per diem as well as reimbursement for travel. And we say they can meet at any time that they would they want. So they could meet 200 days a year. They can meet 10 days a year. And then also, there's, there isn't anything here about the salaries for the positions that we're creating. And, and that's just something that, that I think needs to be part of the debate is, is what the cost to, to our treasury is going to be because of this well I think the obviously through the appropriations process the you know the uh, health uh, appropriations committees on both sides are going to have to negotiate and, and come up with a, uh, a uh, uh, funding strategy and uh, obviously the the governor's office ha would have to weigh into that as well uh, yeah. you know uh, on the lines 171 uh, to 189 uh, we've listed, and, and we're still finding uh, councils and advisory committees and so forth. Uh, there's about 13 of them listed there, but, but I'm certain that there are others that are in code that are supposedly active councils right now that we're funding and that, that we don't feel like the uh, information is, is actually being vetted and, and action being taken from those reports because we really don't have a... a, a consolidated mechanism so you know I, I'd like to think that once it's all over we'll see that we're actually making the government more efficient rather than less and I'm sure that that's your intention that was just a, a concern I had and, and just if I can follow up real quick madam chair um, the, the on line 79 where we reference the transportation costs while traveling by a public carrier is public carrier defined somewhere in code or, or what what does that mean in, in your I'll, mind I'll you? defer to legislative council on that yes public carrier do we know what the, what the limits are for a public carrier is that I is suspect that, that language was was taken from the, the online 79 okay what's it mean that was the one I was I was interested in it, you know or could we be on the hook for paying for someone's flight to wherever these meetings are. Um, that I don't know. I mean, they're going to be paying them probably the same way that the employee bills here pay, so it's probably whatever their policy is, which I would imagine that it's that they're in state. I mean, but most of the appointees on there are all government employees, except for the governor's uh, private folks, which would be fairly local, but you know, presumably you might be flying. Representative is in a essence of time. I mean, but, I mean I, we can follow up with. But I was, I was right, just, it's those not, are just some if, questions I had. If you want to make an imposed amendment in a minute of with excluding flight and maybe put in a meeting that the council shall meet no more than twelve times a year or something. I don't know. Whatever. Just think about it. Okay. One more representative. Wow. Thank you, Madam Chair. Uh, just a quick question. I think the. Uh, the goals are, are great and I think this task force this is a result of the task force recommendation and combining like you mentioned with Ch uh, Chairman Jaspers in 37 through 47 it mentions the 18 members many of which are appointees of the governor uh, including line 46 where the eight members are appointed by the governor and then again in the advisory group 
to this, plus all those commissioners are largely appointed by the governor. And then in line 36, where the advisory group is 19 members appointed by the governor, was there any consideration to letting the lieutenant governor or speaker or somehow, th this body will make recommendations to the legislature for action, I believe, right? I just wondered if there was consideration about having some of those appointments by the lieutenant governor and the speaker. Yeah, I think that, again, my, the, we were following kind of the skeleton of the criminal justice reform, and so a lot of this language was, was removed from them, but, uh, I mean, was taken from that bill. But, uh, again, I don't have any, any heartburn. I mean, I, I think that there's uh, certainly a, a reasonable place for, for that, especially on the advisory board. And the advisory board, I didn't go into it in, in great detail, but in my mind, I think of it as more of the working group. I mean, in other words, the council comes up with the strategy and says, we, we need to accomplish this, and then gets the uh, advisory board. And so we've made it where it can grow or shrink depending on what, what the, the, the current recommendations strategically are. And in my mind, the, the, the state needs to focus on two or three big things and not try to fix everything in one year. And, and having an advisory board that has that flexibility, of if we're working on, say, a hypertensive or obesity initiative or, or whatever, then, then we would get the, the right people in the room that can, can advise the council on what other states are doing, uh, what works, what doesn't work, and so forth. So. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, Senate, Senator, it's almost 2 o'clock. Do you want to? Representative Lott's got a question. Representative, can you ask it quickly? I can. Thank you, Chairman. I um, was just asking about line 103, and that go again, it goes back to the cost. And I'm, I'm having to assume that we didn't have a fiscal note is why we're having this conversation about money. Um, but the director may employ such other professional, technical, and clerical personnel as deemed necessary to carry out the purpose of this chapter. Well, I too have just a concern about it. there's no limit on that. And that could certainly get expensive if I, I don't have any new answer to. It wasn't a question either. Yes, I'm sorry, yes. but it, I'm, I do have that concern. I just wanted to point that out. Thank you. Okay. We seem to have a lot of questions. You have a meeting that you need to get to. Uh, what if? Am I getting that the posture of the committee would be that this be a hearing? and that we ask the presenter to work on what's the questions that have arisen and come back next Tuesday with reforms. Is that everybody that would be in favor of this being a hearing only and doing that, raise your hand. I think we've got the whole committee. Representative Burke, we've heard what, and I would ask our individual mem members that raise questions to seek the senator out right away with suggestions, and then Representative Burke, will you work with me on sort of finalizing what you're going to put in another substitute? I'll be glad to. Okay, and we will hear it. If, if we're going to do that because we're short of time, uh, I, I'm being instructed, told that we are going to be here for committee day on Thursday and possibly Friday also, uh, so that we don't get behind Senator Burke in looking at issues. Could the members, you know, make suggestions or make them to me or to Senator Burke right away, and then can we get together tomorrow or? And see, and I'll see if I can find a room and see if I can set up a meeting either on Thursday or Friday. That'll be fine, and and certainly, if if y'all want to let Representative Jasper be the point person just for, for since he's uh, agreed to cover this, I want him to know what's what's going on. So. Okay, and I think what we're getting is uh, something on the cost, the fact that the lieutenant governor and the speaker don't have any appointments, that we want to add a perhaps in a dentist on that eight area in there so we make sure that we get at least one what Timothy what'd you have 
And and the date, I think the first one might be because it would be enacted by that time. And, you know, since uh, we have a governor now that knows a lot about health care, but we could change the back one or something about when the first report. Does that get pretty much everything that people suggested? What? The director's what? The director would be neutral. Okay, that sum it up for you, Senator? Okay. Thanks, Amy. Thank you very much for coming. Thank y'all. See you either Thursday or Friday, hopefully, and get it done. Huh? Okay, members, you have. Jaspers, are you going to be the point person? Yes, ma'am. And then talk to me about it. Okay. All right, so members, if you have something else to say, talk to Rick. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, well, all right, let's see. Okay, Representative Hatchett, House Resolution 11376. You can do whatever you want to do. Can I just stay right here? Yes, Are y'all offended? You can Is that stay all right? right there. Me, you want me to go down? You can stay. Thank you, House, House Representative. House Resolution 1376 LC337391. This is simply a res an urging resolution to ask the Rural Development Council to give the hospitals and the hospital industry, those they deal with, a stage to tell their story even more in depth. And trans you know, we've heard transparency in the last presentation. Um, one question that has been brought up to me is line 18, where you're talking about the vi viability projections for hospitals in fiscal crisis. Sometimes that may, difficult, may be difficult to uh, let out and expose, but there is a listing that the Department of Community Health has that ranks the hospitals that need help with the um, tax credit, the hospital tax credit that we could probably pay close attention to. So. That's the only thing I've heard about it, and I'll take any questions. So. Questions for Representative Patchett? No questions. Is there anybody in the audience that wants to speak to this resolution? Go ahead. Thank you, Madam Chairman, for the Georgia Hospital Association. I didn't uh, think you could talk anymore. Where's Anna? <laughs> <laughs> She's she, prettier. She chose, she chose to go to the Senate HHS meeting. Oh. See, y'all get me. I'm going to be in trouble for that. Big mistake. <laughs> okay. Uh, I want to thank uh, Representative Patchett for bringing this uh, resolution forward, and we look forward to working with the Rural Development Council and have this opportunity to, uh, to explain uh, the information that he's asking for, how it affects the health care uh, in our state. Happy to answer any questions. Any questions? Don't we all? No questions. Thank you very much. All right. Everybody in favor of the passage of House Resolutions 1376 1376, say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed, say no. Okay. And the ayes have it. Okay. Um, and we did have uh, another senator that was going to present uh, his bill, but unfortunately he's sick and it was removed from the calendar. And of all days, uh, Katie is in a meeting, appropriations is meeting on top of us, and Representative Dempsey asked me to present hers. So let's do uh, House Resolution 1364. And that's LC117-0303. And I apologize again for my voice. And this one is about breast cancer and how it, when it is diagnosed at later stages, it's much more likely to result in death and would be uh, a move to in lower the number of deaths from breast cancer that we have and it's moving to, um, and the Breast and Cervical Cancer Prevention Program raises awareness about the importance of breast cancer screening and provides low-income, uninsured, and 
underinsured women access to critical cancer control and prevention services that they might not otherwise have. And it is basically a resolution to suggest that we uh, broaden the el eligibility and increase funding for this program. And I'll be glad to answer whatever questions I can answer on this one. No, no questions? Okay, thank you. Anybody in the audience that wants to speak on the breast cancer one? Okay, we have a motion and a second. Anybody in, uh, everybody in favor of the passage of House Resolution 1364, say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? No? Okay, my eyes have it. Thank you very much. The next one is House Resolution 1375 by Representative Denson. Okay, this, boy, this brings back memories. Uh, when my first year in the legislature, I had a constituent come to me. Her child was a baseball player at West Georgia. He had called her one evening and he said he had a cold and wasn't feeling well, that he had a cold or flu. The next thing she knew, he was in the infirmary and then in the hospital in Carrollton. And as she rushed down there, they were removing his legs. And within the next few days, he had had all his limbs removed and he still died from the infection. Um, the chairman of the health committee at that time was a retired telephone lineman that would tell you that he hated doctors and there was nobody with a health care background on that committee. And so chairman, I mean the Whitman chairman of the time, Joe Wilkerson, carried the bill for me uh, to start having colleges tell students and send home to their parents about this deadly disease. And this one is just a move. Uh, it happens to young people that contragate in groups and smoke and drink. There's a high prevalence of it. And this one is just moving. That was for college that all public and private schools to educate students and parents about the dangers of menococcal disease. So uh, I'll answer any questions I have. Um, hopefully we can save some lives uh, by making parents more aware of this deadly disease and need to be vaccinated. Uh, and not all the vaccinations that you get for them will, you know, prevent this terrible one, but uh, any vaccinations along this line are helpful. And there have been more developed since that time when we moved the first bill. Uh, motion to do pass in a second. Is there any discussion? Do I have anybody in the audience that wants to speak to the illness? Okay. Every, okay. Everyone in favor of the passage. House Resolution 1375 can say aye. aye. Anyone opposed? No. Okay, the ayes have it. Introduce yourself, Representative Dempsey. Okay, um, the next one is mine. And I, you look at House Resolution 1363, and I think you might find it interesting if you read the people who signed the bill. I didn't think. It's sort of a parting gift for Representative Peek from me um, on marijuana. It's an urging resolution. I'm tired of the debate. I would like Congress, my preference would be that they would move marijuana from a Schedule One to a Schedule Two and allow our universities and our established drug companies to a st you know to study and for once and all decide what illnesses marijuana can help and which ones they can't and how much THC is needed at all, if at all to end these medications as you know they can study it in Britain and they have a new drug that's very close to coming out it's Epidiolex it has almost no THC in it I mean, it is miscule, and yet it is being effective in many of our children's 
with the terrible seizures. I appreciate the Medical College of Georgia, as I will always call it, the Medical College of Georgia, instead of the Augusta University and the Medical College of Georgia at the Augusta University, uh, for uh, they have had a study. Um, the English company was nice enough to grant us a compassion study where I think we could take up to 100 children. Uh, they all got the drug. It was not where some of them got it and some of them didn't. And th the only thing they were studying was what time they gave it, gave it to them, the doses, and that kind of thing. And they are seeing significant positive results. Not perfect, not 100%, but many of those children are being helped with the English drug, Epidiolex. So what this would do, if they won't move it from a one to a two, Senator Hatch in the U.S. Senate and a Democrat whose name I fail to forget have a bipartisan bill that would make it where uh, that it could be studied while it's still a Schedule One. Uh, Senator Hatch is leaving this year. They are pushing for the bill. I talked to uh, Senator Perdue when he was in the House chamber the other day and asked him to uh, please push Senator Hatch's bill and that, that bipartisan bill. He said, of course, it had hit a snag, and with no disrespect to my Democrat friends, for once, it's not the Republicans holding it up. He said the Democrats were holding up that bill. And so, and he was not trying to be partisan about it at the time. So, I don't know what the problem is. So, could y'all, could y'all, if we find out the name for it, can y'all call that U.S. Democrat senator and ask him to move it? So, that's what the bill does. Okay, Representative Pig. Okay, well, I, I have questions or comments. Thanks, Madam Chair. Um, while you and I have not always seen eye to eye on this issue, um, over the last several years, I am glad to um, co-sponsor this bill with you we, and, and to be in agree agreement with you that Congress does need to act on this issue and that, that has always been the challenge and the obstacle for us at the state level, um, whether it's our state or any state, uh, is that Congress does need to act. And so um, I'm glad to co-sponsor this with you and glad we could find something we can agree on and proud to, proud to um, support it with you. Thank you. I, uh, I you know, I'm tired of the fact that federal law trumps state law and that no matter what we do, we are technically breaking federal law. And that puts our families that use these oils at risk. And I think it's time to find out and do something about it. So thank you very much, Representative Pete. Senator Howard. I mean, Representative Howard. I just want to. Uh at the appropriate time, motion, make a motion to do pass. Okay, I'll let you make it. Okay. Do all right, it's the time. Uh, motion, make a motion to do pass. Do, oh, we have lots of a motion to do pass and lots of seconds. Is there anybody in the audience that wants to speak on this? Okay, seeing no one. Everyone in favor of the passage of House Resolution 1363, say aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? No. And so the eyes have it. Thank you all very much. And this may be one of the shortest health uh, committee meetings on record. So please note it down. We are adjourned. And wait, wait, wait. And first, let me represent. Let me welcome uh, Representative Will Hood to the meeting. I forgot to do it last time. I think he's our newest member. Uh, so uh, get ready for a, a really quick ride and a rough ride <laughs> for the rest of. The for the session, you haven't seen anything yet, Representative LaHood, till you go through the last days of a session. But welcome to the Health Committee. Thank you very much. We are adjourned.